it's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today, we're going to focus on the Magic Archer, which, at least in the opinion of yours truly, is the highest skill cap card in the game. So why not have a video just focusing on a player who's really god tier in terms of skill with that specific card, which is a high risk and sometimes high reward card if it's in the hands of a user who knows how to actually extrapolate the value from the card. So that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. And thanks to you guys for suggesting this in the comments. Uh, the deck that we're going to highlight is not a new one. The player that we're going to highlight is not a new one either. And it's not being normal. It's actually Harry, the Iranian pro, who's really just kind of inconspicuously dominated the ladder for a long time now. Under the radar, you're not a player that you're hearing from every single day on social media. Just continues to kind of grind and do his things. That's why I've always really respected his gameplay, especially with the Magic Archer Bridge Spam deck, which we'll be highlighting today. Day. Again, fifth in the world at 6760 trophies. Man, trophy inflation is real, ladies and gentlemen. So here we go. Let's take a look at the deck. It, again, it's not a new deck here. I shared it a few weeks ago, but it's really strong still. And, and, and shout out to all my free-to-play players. I care about you guys. I'll be doing more free-to-play uh, friendly content here on the channel. In fact, a few days ago, I released a video with Mini Minter where we discussed four top free-to-play decks. Uh, and he played them live in the 4 to 5k range and ladder. So many Elite Barbarians. It was dirty. It was crazy. But it was a really fun video to do. Uh, in case you missed that one, I'll link it below for you guys. So today, I want to start out actually by hopping into a quick training camp because I want to show you the six positions where you can play your magic archer. Why not, right? Uh, okay, position number one, which is the most rare of any position, is behind the king tower. Position number two is up at the uh, the river here to snipe your uh, your enemy's buildings. Position number three is behind the king t the princess tower against swarm units right over here, as, as if this was like minions and stuff coming in the left lane. Position number four is going to be opposite lane of the attack on defense. So that's if you want to counterattack into this lane. Position number five, of course, is the same lane of the attack. In position number six is going to be two or three tiles to the left or the right of the bridge. Now, of course, you can also place it directly on the bridge, so I guess technically that's seven, but it depends on the angle of the defending troops. Usually, a smart defender will not place the defending troops smack dab in the center of the uh, the lane if they know that you have magic archer. So basically, angling it, the sixth position is angling that magic archer at the bridge to support your battle ram, in this case, or a lumberjack against the defending troops and getting that kind of incidental damage which is really where you can capitalize on the magic archer's value onto the princess tower with that magic arrow that goes through that goes excuse me through its targets so guys let's go ahead and hop into a replay right off the bat here uh let's watch the one against b normal to start things off here against a mortar deck uh, and, and see how uh, Harry plays this. And again, I want to really focus on the Magic Archer in these replays because the deck, while a high skill cap deck and certainly in a very effective deck, probably one of the strongest decks in all of ladder right now if you have the legendaries and the card levels of course these opponents are all maxed out as well as uh, harry here but it's just such a strong deck and i noticed four of the top 10 players in the world as of this morning we're using this very deck so there's going to be actually a mirror matchup against semi-patriot that you guys will probably enjoy as well so here comes the first magic archer we're already seeing tons of value allowing that battle ram to actually hit that tower and actually doing a lot of damage to this boy rascal just look at how fast the magic archer fires totally totally killing the rascals here and now staying alive to engage against this tower remember this magic archer was actually used on defense to begin with and then we get even more chip damage out of that magic archer and that was playing the magic archer same lane on defense there so now again same lane is that mortar on defense so now again we're just going to go ahead and cycle this deck does a lot of cycling in the awkward kind of transition phases of the match so we'll play a lot of inferno dragons in the back we'll play a lot of royal ghosts in the back we don't really play a lot of magic archers in the back uh, even if the opponent doesn't have a lot of spell value again i said that was the most rare position to play the magic archer earlier when i was talking about positioning and I stand by that statement and ironically that's also the number one most popular I would say position that a lot of kind of novices such as such as me 
plays the Magic Archer, uh, and that's not what you want to do. You want to play it almost in a surprise role, just like you saw there, totally taking care of that minion horde, and then forcing the opponent to have to react really quickly to that Magic Archer. There's definitely a speed component of the Magic Archer, just because of that fast fire rate, that sometimes the opponent will panic, such as that situation, and we're able to really get a lot of value out of him there, and already, before Double Elixir time, we're able to take down that left tower, and just in this matchup, it's pretty easy, relatively easy, because, and I wanted to start with this one, because the opponent doesn't have that big spell, right? But even though they don't have that fireball, it doesn't mean we're always just going to play the Magic Archer in the back, unless we're cycling, just defending at the end of the match when we already have the lead, such as this circumstance right now. That was our first Magic Archer, and I want to say the only one that you'll see played behind the King Tower in today's video. A lot of time, we're just getting a tremendous value out of kind of, you know, in a way, similar to Princess, where Princess, sometimes she can just chill, you know, and just play defense on your side of the arena before she gets to the bridge for quite a long time. And that's honestly where she represents or, or what represents a lot of her value that she brings to the table. Kind of the same thing with Magic Archer. And again here, just chipping away, just doing a good job, kind of clogging up that left lane. Battle Ram actually connects in the right lane. Magic Archer, a fire, look at that fireball. What a beautiful fireball. We should bring on uh, Harry for fireball pro tips, making sure you angle that fireball to kind of dictate what direction the troop knocks back. In that case, perfectly timed fire or placement on that fireball to push the miner into the king tower to clinch that victory. Very well played there. That's something that I've been trying to get better at, aiming that fireball to push those executioners in the direction where I want them to go. Uh, you know, that's probably the, the main example of where you can really use that knockback effect to your advantage. Uh, so guys, let's go ahead and and watch the replay here. Let's watch a mirror match against Semi-Patriot. And you'll see the same exact deck. Both of these players top 10 at the time of, of this match taking place. I think Semi-Patriot's around 17 right now in the world. I'll go ahead and double check if I remember after this replay. So let's watch how both players play their Magic Archers here. And we're going to be focusing again on, on Harry, who's at the bottom of the screen. And oh, how Harry gets more value out of this Magic Archer, which allows him to actually win this matchup. So here we go, guys, gonna be Inferno Dragons, both being cycled in the back, but of course, Semi-Patriot does have the advantage because he has the uh, Ice Golem kind of tanking ahead of the Inferno Dragon. So we're gonna go ahead and play an opposite lane, uh, kind of the sniping position of the Magic Archer, and Semi-Patriot is immediately going to respond with a Magic Archer of his own. Now, Royal Ghost does really, really well against Magic Archer, so we're gonna easily be able to play him or pre-play the Royal Ghost to the side there, always very important you're defending against the Magic Archer to angle it properly so that you're not taking that incidental damage to your Princess Tower. So here we go. It's going to be a Battle Ram. Lumberjack's going to easily take care of that Battle Ram. Here comes the Fireball raining down by the opponent. That Fireball might have been a little bit of an overcommitment here. Now we have an Inferno Dragon on the board, and the Elixir is otherwise relatively tied before we place that Battle Ram. Of course, semi Patriot's going to respond with a Lumberjack of his own, but again here we have the Inferno Dragon in tow, forcing semi Patriot to also support with an Ice Golem. This Inferno Dragon's gonna almost kill that Lumberjack, avoid taking any damage to him, and already about halfway through this match, we're in a, a small advantage here, Elixir-wise. We play that Royal Ghost aggressively at the bridge, knowing that we did have the Elixir advantage at that point. Now we're tied, and here comes the Battle Ram down our side of the arena. Okay, there's the uh, second or the third position, I'm losing track of the numbers, of the Magic Archer. Now, even though the opponent, let me pause real quick here, even though the opponent had the fireball in hand, and of course Harry knew that when he played the Magic Archer, he did not bite. Now, opponents who are not as smart as Semi Patriot would have definitely used fireball there. And you can make the argument that, you know, whether he used the fireball or didn't use the fireball, he would have lost this match no matter what by this point, just given the huge elixir advantage here. Because look at Harry, they both have. Four, well, well, Harry has four elixir, four and a half, and Semi Patriot has six. So, one and a half elixir disadvantage. However, look at this we have eight elixir worth of troops already on the arena. That's huge, and I doubt he would have been able to make a comeback, but certainly had he used the fireball there, he probably would have been three-crowned. It would have been that devastating. He decides not to use the fireball, so we play that smart magic archer, kind of almost begging for the fireball bait there behind the tower. Look at how much value this magic archer is going to live on to have here, guys. Magic archer targeting the inferno dragon, a beautiful zap there to reset the other inferno dragon. Now the ice golem comes in, but look 
look at that magic archer still right out of range of that tower. He lives on. This is the same magic archer that defended against that uh, battle ram about, what, 30 seconds ago, it feels like. So again, a royal ghost to go ahead and take care of the opposing magic archer. And another one cycled two tiles to the right of the bridge so he can target the princess tower going through the opponent's magic archer. That's what we talked about, guys. Putting your magic archer down at an angle, two tiles to the right or three tiles to the left of the bridge, if the support troops are angled in that direction, will allow the magic archer to, to actually fire straight through the opponent and hit that princess tower. Really important that you guys get that value out of your magic archer. It really adds up that damage onto the opponent's princess tower. So again, here guys, you have a mirror matchup against Semi Patriot, who's a really, really good player. And he made it really look easy. Harry just played that, got a tremendous amount of value out of his Magic Archer there. And again, just knowing the positioning there, let's go ahead and focus on a matchup where we're going to be using the Magic Archer in a way that we haven't seen yet. When we're going after the opposite lane tower than the opponent. Uh, so here we go, guys. Let's check out this deck. Uh, Giant Balloon. I think a lot of you guys have been asking for Giant Balloon decks, so here you go. If you want a good one for ladder, it's definitely an interesting deck. It doesn't have that big spell in it. However, it does have a lot of zap bait uh, into the deck. It has the Skarmie, and of course, it has the Inferno Dragon. So we start out this match actually just playing, cycling the Magic Archer at the start uh, to go ahead and uh, meet head-to-head -head with that Inferno Dragon. Of course, the Magic Archer would just die to the Inferno Dragon, so we do go ahead and support him here with an Ice Golem, so the Magic Archer will actually live on here and do some chip damage to the left tower. And meanwhile, the opponent really having to use a lot of Elixir to defend in the right lane, so we're going to be able to easily just zap this away and then kind of reset, but the opponent does have an Elixir advantage, and here it comes. It's a Giant and a Balloon coming in the right lane. This is the first time we're going to go ahead and play that uh, Magic Archer in the back. She's going to... He, excuse me, sorry Magic Archer, is going to go ahead and take care of all those bats, help bleed away at the uh, balloon and also the giant, and really stop that tower from, from going down there. Now we have a Magic Archer play, that same Magic Archer, excuse me, getting more value out of him, played at the bridge, and he's actually going to connect on the right tower. What a lethal counterattack behind the Royal Ghost. Inferno Dragon and Magic Archer combo there. Magic Archer helping that Royal Ghost kill the Ewiz and then killing the, or helping both of the troops kill the Princess Tower. Just beautifully played there. Now, well, I guess I lied, huh? That was same lane, kind of, but it was coming off our counterattack. But now it's going to be opposite lane once the opponent, once we have one tower down, obviously, right? So here it comes. going to be an Inferno Dragon. I think it's going to be a big, fat Inferno Dragon giant balloon push here on the right. And here it is. So here it comes, an Inferno Dragon by us, and this is the perfect time for an opposite lane Magic Archer. And where is it? <laughs> here it comes, maybe, sorta. I lied. Here comes the Fireball and the Battle Ram instead. We actually didn't play the Magic Archer in that situation. I was thinking of another replay. My bad, guys. That's what you come to expect here. Here comes the opposite lane Magic Archer. Gonna clean up against this uh, Inferno Dragon and the uh, E-Wiz. Of course, the Miner will take out the uh, the Magic Archer, but the Ice Vortex of the Ice Golem's death here will kill that E-Wiz. So here we go now. It's a Royal Ghost at the bridge. Again, just keeping the pressure on here. And here it goes. It's gonna be an Inferno Dragon and a Lumberjack player on that giant we need to take that that giant down to avoid the damage from the balloon and here it comes magic archer helping out there and the skarmy is going to be absolutely decimated by the lumberjack with the help of the magic archer in tow in support coming from the left of that tower and here it goes guys i think a battle ram will finish this off here it comes a battle ram played on the bridge can those barbarians get to the tower get to the tower he got it boom tower down Nice victory there. Not exactly what we're talking about leading into the victory, but you guys get the point. Uh, just getting a lot of value there. Separation being key. Playing that Mag Magic Archer to the opposite side of that Princess Tower. Let's go ahead and use the knowledge that we've kind of ascertained throughout this video and try to, uh, to pick up a victory here on Ladder, guys. And we only have a level 3 Magic Archer, so we're going to be careful of him. But not like it really matters a ton. Obviously, his DPS. The, oh my god. The higher DPS is nice, but we're just going to go ahead and Battle Ram and Magic Archer. Same lane in the, in the left lane here. We have the Inferno Dragon. We also have the Lumberjack to use on the opposite lane on defense. Looks like this guy's just going to take all of this damage. 
So what I want to do is use the, the Lumberjack against the Musketeer. And the Inferno Dragon against the Golem. And that should actually be fine. I'd rather protect my Lumberjack here, so I'm going to go ahead and cycle to another Ice Golem. We didn't actually do a lot of damage, to be truthful here, guys, to the... Uh... Let's see. Let's hit him in the right lane here, guys. Hit him with a little counterattack. Okay, he's just going to use a lot of Elixir there. So I'm actually going to push left here now. Just because I feel like I have a really big elixir advantage. And he just uses cannon as well. So I have my uh, zap ready. Nice, 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 nice. This guy is really low on elixir. If I can just capitalize on this. And look at that. The tower actually targeted onto the magic archer. Allowing my royal ghost to get quite a few hits there in the left lane. Uh, you really never want to start out. Even though it didn't really cost him that much. You really never want to start out. At least in my opinion. with I'm just going to fireball here guys. I haven't seen a pump from this guy yet. That could have been a big mistake, but, you know, I don't know. I didn't really have an obvious play, I felt like. I didn't want to use my Inferno. I could play Lumberjack at the bridge, which honestly was probably the right decision. I'm going to play Lumberjack instead, uh, along with the Battle Ram here. And let's just see if we can get, like, a lot of damage against that, uh, against this uh, Golem here. Or at least against the support troops. So what I want to do is cycle to an Ice Golem again to tank here. Uh, and then I want to get a Battle Ram for that Mini P.E.K.K.A. And the, the Inferno Dragon is actually doing a really good job here, guys. Uh, my Magic Archer did go down, which is not what we wanted, kind of. But, uh, wow, look at this. This guy's hardcore. Okay. Looks like he's going to take my right tower, so I got to stop uh, worrying about that so much. And just cycle to a Magic Archer. And cycle to a fireball eventually here. Okay. 17 seconds. I don't want to panic. Well, there's actually no reason at all to panic, so. I'm just going to go ahead and fireball. We can't get the cannon, unfortunately. Good placement there on that cannon. Let's see if he drops a golem. I don't think he will, but you never know. Okay, he does. We're going to hit this dude hard. Gonna get a Lumberjack over there. I think we got him here, guys. I think we got him. Lumberjack does a really good job on defense. You can tell this guy is not about uh, going all in on this push. I'm gonna Battle Ram here in the pocket. Real Ghost intercepts that mini P.E.K.K.A. I'm trying to keep the pressure up here. I'm gonna go ahead and, ba and uh, Fireball Zap this uh, Muskie. Let that Lumberjack go to work. And he gets the job done. It's a good game. Wow. Didn't make it look easy. Probably made a bunch of mistakes. But it's a really fun deck to play. And it helps you get better at the game. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Huge shout out to Brandon Shang, my YouTube partner. Check out his information in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, take care, guys.